All right, I'm recording straight off the screen, so the resolution's going to be terrible. There's nothing I can do about that. I apologize. Um, what I have here is Windows Explorer open. I have a folder here I made at the top called Watermarks. Inside of it, what I have is a picture I want to watermark and protect. And I have a logo here that I got through a Google search. Um, when you want to search for something that you're going to use as a transparency, you want to use something that has what they call a transparent background. So when you're searching for a copyright logo, be sure it has a transparent background or else what happens is when you go to use it, you're going to end up with a square and it's going to just block out whatever is in the background with it with the icons and the symbols that have transparent backgrounds that's when your work is allowed to see through so you want to be sure to do that so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come down here I already have Photoscape open this is a uh, free software it's actually it's pretty decent I give it a really high rating for for being free there's a ton of stuff you can do with it I'm not going to talk about it now we're just going to focus on doing the watermarks so what you want to do is uh, oh and I'll provide a I'll provide a link so that you can find this but you can also just fo uh, put Photoscape into uh, Google and search it and the download will come up what we want to do now is go right up to the top here and we want to open up the editor and once the editor is open what you're going to see is you have two side menus here one that select that allows you to select the folder that contains your uh, artwork and then below will show whatever is in the folder that is currently selected so I want to come up here and hit watermark so that I can get down to get to the picture that I want now we're going to use this picture in the demonstration I'm just going to double click on it and it appears there on the screen oh it looks like it's the one I used last time and there's two watermarks in there already but anyhow we'll just leave those and disregard it what we're going to do is we're going to come down here into the object section and we're going to select this text box right here we're going to open the text box and we're, we'll just I'm going to just use watermark for the for the word so what I did was I put in my whatever you want to call it you can call it I think the last one I called Steven Turner designs you can call whatever your watermark you can choose what you want to name it um, just below this box where you type in what you want here is a whole selection of fonts so you can choose what font you want to use as well right it doesn't really matter I'm just going to leave this as a default Below it, you can cheat, choose if you want to bold, italicized, underlined. You want you can choose the orientation. I have center uh, justification here because you're going to relocate it anyhow. Um, this box, you can pick how big it is, change the size. But once you're done, you can actually just click on the corner of this and make it any size you want this is where you can choose what color you want to use if you want it to do a colored one you can um, it looks bold right now we're going to change the opacity I'm going to get to that in a second but this is where you select the font color that you want over here you can also apply an outline so I just applied a, a dark blue outline there I don't know all oh, there outline and text Let's change that to something that's a bit more visible just for the demonstration. There's there's a yellow one. Um, what you can do here just below this where you select the color of the outline is you can increase the size of it. So as you see, going through the stages there, oops, it increases. Now in addition to that, you can also add a shadow to it you see it's offset there if you want to do that or not I don't know it's up to you same thing 
select your color. Select the opacity of the sh of the shadow. But for this, we're, I'm just going to turn these off. I've did I've done colored ones. We're just going to do a simple gray tone. You're going to come into here and you're going to pick a gray tone if you want it gray. And over here, right at this part, is the opacity. You watch as it slides down. As my mouse button fails. You can see now it's very, very faint. Like it's 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 very hard to see. And that's what you want for your transparency. You want your artwork to see through it. So I usually just leave it on a really, really low setting. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to come over and put my cursor on it. And I'm going to move it up here. Just so it's a bit more, I don't know, find somewhere a bit visible. I maybe made, made it a bit too faint. Okay, in this case, what you do is you right-click and you go into Edit Properties and it brings that box back up. So I'm just going to come here and make the opacity a, a tiny bit stronger. Select OK. And that's it. There's your watermark. You can place it wherever you want. You can, uh, using this, you can put it on an angle. Tuck it away. Okay, now... That's for text style watermarks. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you wanted to put a symbol in, instead of using the t text selection here, you'd come over here to this little picture. It's a photograph icon. Click that. And it asks me, do I want a photo? Yes, I do. Well, now we're going to come back into here. I'm going to go to where my folder is, which is right here. And I'm going to double click on the copyright symbol. And there we have the copyright symbol. Now, the copyright symbol is a bit huge right now. But anyhow, over here, right away, you can adjust the opacity of it. You see, I just took it right, right down. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to grab the corner of the box here. And I'm going to resize it. And I'm just going to leave it there. It's done. There's your watermark. That one's red. It shows it a bit more through. You can pick what colors as you upload them. Okay, so having all set, done all this now, you're going to go save your file. Oh, I already got it locked as read only. Yeah, save it. And then at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to close this down. Now, for the next part here what I want you to do is the file now has this file right here now has a watermark on it but it's still an open source file like anybody can do anything they want to it pretty much because it's open you're going to right click and you're going to come down to properties in the properties here now there's several different tabs I want you to go to the third tab over here called details and this is where you put in all your pertinent data okay you, you enter your title below it you enter your subject right for me that's painting by Stephen Turner the title I titled it found this is where you also set your star rating for your photo which is a bit of a joke but anyhow you're the one that chooses how many stars your photo has I give all mine five all the time so I just click on end and make it five tags here this is important this is where web search crawlers identify your file so you want to put words in trigger words that are going to identify your file and get it sourced more easily so for me I always put my name for one so if somebody searching my name it's going to come up secondly because it has to do with wolves I have wolves wolf art wolf art and like I'd put everything um, endangered species and I'd go on like trigger words that are going to pull at people that are interested in that but maybe not necessarily part of the art world. It's, it's going to help to get it all pulled together. So your tags are very, very important. Right below that there's a comment section. 
Um, in mine, I just have artist Steven Turner acrylic on canvas. You know what? This also helps identify this as your work. If somebody steals it, I'm going to show you how to lock this stuff so it's embedded. Nobody can open this or alter it. It is always there. It's for your protection. Down here, it says, you know, that I altered it with uh, Photoscape. Here is where I type in copyright. Copyright 2001 or 2017, sorry. Now I have all this done um, because I didn't make setting changes this time. The apply button didn't light up. But at this point, what you would do once you've entered all of your data, you click apply. Once you've clicked apply, come back to the very first tab, the general tab. Go to the bottom. You're going to see attributes here. This is the key part here. Hidden. That's sort of if you want to keep something hidden on your computer and you, you only know it's there. But what you want to do is you want to click read only. And you want to see the little green check mark go in this box. As I click that, the apply button came up. Okay, I'm going to click apply right now. And I'm going to click OK. What we just did was we made this a read only file. So no matter where you post it, nobody will ever get into the tributes that we just set. Okay, it's still highlighted up here. But you'll see down here, Stephen Turner found walls like it all all the all the information, even the camera the picture was took with, right? It was taken with a Nikon, so it even tells you like he used a Nikon D D thirty two hundred on this, right? Um, now it's locked. It's safe. Somebody might steal your picture. But they can't get into edit it. They can't erase the watermark. You just sealed it when you made that a read-only file. Also, making it a read-only file, I'll bring I'll bring that back up anyhow, and it will stay that way every time you go into the properties. It's still showing read-only. Um, that means nobody can change the tributes and all the information. It's yours. So, like if somebody does steal it, they're they're sort of screwed because they're on the spot. You know, your digital information is embedded within it, and it can't be unlocked. Okay, so that's my tutorial. Thanks for listening.